everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Puck. Today we are doing the knitting book tag. So this is a tag that was created by my friend Kara over at Wild Book Garden. I will link her original video and her channel below. You should definitely go check her out if you haven't already. Uh, so Kara is a big knitter, so she created this book tag and I am a big crocheter and so we talk about knitting and crocheting and crafts quite a lot. Uh, and also we recently have been doing a couple of like crafting live stream sprints uh, over on Kara's channel. So also if you're interested in those, check out uh, her channel because we're planning to do more of them. And if you would like to join in, that's where they're gonna be happening. So let's get into the tag. Question one is cast on the first section you scope out in a bookstore, library, online book shopping. Uh, so online book shopping, I don't do a lot of scoping out a particular section because I usually am just like looking for a specific thing and I search it and like find it for online book shopping. In a bookstore, I mean, I do kind of first browse the like new releases section because it's just at the front of the store usually. But the first section that I like intentionally go to, I feel like is obviously the fantasy section. I go to the adult fantasy section and kind of poke around there to see if there's anything new and interesting. Uh, and also if I am looking for something specific, that is usually like where I am looking for something. Question two is knit. Obviously a staple of knitting, a super hyped book that completely delivered for you. For this, I'm gonna go with Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I read this earlier this year and you know, it, it came out a couple of years ago, but it has gotten a lot of hype uh, since it first came out. And I wasn't sure if it was really going to live up to the hype, especially because I had heard from some people that it just had very minimal world building. And world building isn't something I always need, but like, I'm just picky about stuff. <laughs> and world building is one of the things I can be picky about. Uh, but when I read Black Sun, I loved it. I loved the way the world building was done, actually. It is fairly minimal it, in a way that like, it doesn't have a lot of like exposition world building. There isn't a lot of explaining the world, but I think you get such a strong feeling for the world and a good sense of the world from the way that she's just woven information about it and just the vibes into the book that I just ended up loving it. Question three is Pearl, as important as the knit stitch, but probably not as famous. Name a character you think deserves more love from the fandom, the author, or other characters, etc. For this, I'm gonna go with a character from Lady Hotspur by Tessa Grattan, which definitely deserved more love from the other characters, which is, I think his name was Connolly. He was my favorite character, but I just cannot remember his name. I remember like the vibes of his character and I loved him so much. And he is just like too sweet and too pure for this world and deserves so much better. And the other characters just like did not appreciate, did not appreciate him enough and like, that poor child, I loved him so much. Question four, chart, a book or author you've been meaning to read, but somehow just haven't gotten around to and why? I feel like I've talked about this so many times that I really have been meaning to read The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu for so long. Uh, it has been on my TBR. I meant to read it this year. I meant to read it last year. Like I just keep not reading it. I don't have like a really specific reason other than I want to like it and I am afraid that I won't and so I just don't read it because it stays in the realm of possibilities. Question five is double pointed needles. Recommend a series you can actually read out of order and one that people might think you can but you actually can't. Okay, so a series that you can read out of order is probably the Penrick and Desdemona series by Lois Master Bujold. It is a series of novellas uh, that is following Penrick and Desdemona. Uh, so it's set in the world of the five gods and our main character is Penrick who kind of un unintentionally or accidentally uh, inherits a demon uh, which he then names Desdemona and she like possesses his body and they kind of share his body um 
and because of this he becomes a dedicate and a scholar and priest i guess is kind of 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 the bastard which is one of their gods and so we're following penric and desdemona as they go on um go on adventures and so this series you probably should read the first book first which i think is called penric's demon um but then after that i mean there are definitely books that clearly come after other books but for the most part they're pretty episodic and you're going to be able to understand what's going on in any book any given book that you pick up also because of the way the series was written uh it was sort of written out of order so it kind of doesn't matter um a series that they say you can read out of order but i don't think you can i mean i guess for this one i can go back to uh the queens of innis Lear and lady hotspur because those are technically marketed as like companion standalones you should be able to read lady hotspur on its own i don't really think that you should uh like i think that you could but i don't think it's gonna be as good if you do i think that you'll understand the world and be more invested in the world if you read the queens of innis Lear first and also you will be kind of spoiled for the events of some of the outcomes and events of uh the queens of innis Lear if you read Lady Hotspur, even though they're set 100 years apart. But I think that you really should read them in order, which would be starting with The Queens of Innis Lear. Question six is Cables, a book you heard negative reviews for, but you ended up loving. I don't know if I heard like super negative reviews, but The Rainwild Chronicles by Robin Hobb, uh, I heard a lot of lackluster reviews i guess kind of negative reviews of people being like oh you just have to get through it and it's like really the worst one and it's not that good and like you just kind of have to like get through it to get to the rest and honestly the Rainwild chronicles might be my favorite like series like there are other books within the realm of the elderlings that I liked more as individual books but as a series within the realm of the elderlings I, that might be my favorite one just like as a whole. Question seven, Skein, why do we still sell yarn like this? A trope you can't stand. For some reason I'm having a really hard time thinking of a trope that I can't stand even though I'm I know there are so many and yet my brain is completely blanking uh but the the only one I can think of right now is like there's a trope they doesn't have a name but there's sort of this like trope in especially I think YA fantasy but there it's in adult fantasy too of these like strong female characters who are they're supposed the way that they assert that they're so strong is by like just acting stupid and refusing help when they clearly need it and then they get themselves into situations where they have to be saved and it puts someone else in danger because they refused to take reasonable advice because they're like no you can't tell me what to do and i just like i hate it i don't know what that trope is but i hate it i actually made a whole video one time talking about this trope uh so if you wanna if you wanna see me rant about it a little bit more, I'll put it in the description. Question eight is Gage Swatch. Share an author who is always a good fit for you. I mean, I think that pretty obviously Juliet Marillier, always a good fit for me. <laughs> uh, even the books that are like less favorite ones by her are it's still pretty solid. Like I like them. Uh, Lois Master Bujold is also an author that I think is generally a pretty good fit for me, especially her fantasy. I haven't read a lot of her sci-fi because she has one like really long sci-fi series that I've only read like two books from. But in general, I think she's also usually a pretty good fit. Question nine, stitch marker, share a specific scene that stands out clearly in your mind. No spoilers. One that just first came to mind is a scene from uh, The Lost Queen by Signe Pike, which there's there's just this specific scene uh where they are having this like celebration outside they are like dancing around bonfires and then the main character ends up like running through the woods for a while and that scene was just like very vivid to me uh and it's still like i still think about it 
sometimes. Question 10 is yarn weight. Super useful info to take in at a glance. Do you have some bookish taste buddies? This could be someone you have really similar taste to in general or for a specific kind of book. One person that I think I have some similar book taste to uh, is Chris from Chris Bookish Cauldron, uh, especially like specifically for fantasy and like backlist fantasy because uh, he also does a lot of uh, like literary fiction, which I don't read as much of, but in fantasy, we both like to read a lot of uh, backless fantasy written by women, and I think there are some definite similarities. Both really like Juliet Marillier, um, both like Robin Hobb, although he's much more of a fan of Robin Hobb than I am, but there are just certain things about uh, like writing style, storytelling, types of characters, I think that we have some definite similarities. And so if there is a fantasy, but especially a backlist fantasy that he's talking about, it definitely piques my interest. Question 11 is that novelty yarn someone gifted to you because they heard you like knitting, but it is impossible to work with. What's a book that it looked perfect for you on paper, but just didn't work out? I was just recently reminded of this book, uh, which was, I think, Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins? I'll put, I think that's what who it's by. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but that book, I was so excited about it. It looked like something I was going to love. Uh, it seemed like it was going to have like these complicated sister dynamics in it, which is something that I really enjoy. And I was specifically looking for after reading The Queens of Innis Lear. Uh, and it kind of, from the cover and the description, it was kind of giving me similar vibes as The Queens of Innis Lear. And then I read it and I just hated it. There were so many things that were just so bad <laughs> about it and it was so disappointing. Question 12 is Scarf, the perfect starter project. Recommend a good book for getting into a genre or kind of book. I actually have already mentioned this one but The Lost Queen by Signe Pike I think is a really good entry into historical fiction for people who primarily read fantasy uh, because that is how it worked for me. Uh, I have definitely read like historical fantasy before, but reading uh, The Lost Queen made me go, oh, maybe I should read more like actual just historical fiction. Uh, it definitely feels very magical. It is set in early medieval Scotland. And so the setting of it uh, feels very reminiscent of a lot of like classic you know, fantasy, uh, but also her writing is very beautiful and atmospheric and it feels very magical in it. It does have a little bit of magic in it too, so I feel like it's an easy transition for people who mostly read uh, fantasy wanting to kind of transition into historical fiction because uh, it worked out that way for me so I've become much more interested in historical fiction after reading that. Question 13 is socks. Handmade socks are way harder than they look. Talk about an underrated author who deserves more hype. First of all I'm just gonna say making socks is a lot of work. I, as I said, I don't knit, I crochet, but I have tried to crochet socks before. I made one sock. I, I crocheted one sock and was tired of it and did not make a matching sock. So somewhere, I don't know what I did with it, but somewhere I have a single sock just sitting around. So as for an author who needs more hype, I feel like the authors that I feel like need more hype, I have already talked about. Like Tessa Grattan, I love her so much and like I think that her books are not for everyone so I kind of get why they maybe don't get as much hype but also I think they deserve more hype because they're great. Um, Juliet Marillier I think you know she's well known within fantasy but like on booktube she's been getting definitely more attention but I also still think she deserves way more hype than she gets. Uh, but I've already talked about those two authors a lot. I think that Neon Yang probably deserves more hype. Like, I he I see people talking about their books every once in a while, but I read the Tensert series last year and loved it, and I don't know, well, I do know. <sighs> this is the thing, is a lot of the books that I love, I'm like, I understand why not everybody likes them, but also I want more people to like them. <laughs> uh, so like, Neon Yang, another one where I'm like, I get why maybe they're not 
an author for everybody, but I loved the Tenseret series. I think that they deserve more hype. I have not read Genesis of Misery yet, but I am so excited for it. Question 14 is cast off, a weirdly specific thing you love, which could be a trope, something in a book, construction, etc. I think that most of the things that are like really specific that I love, you probably already know because I probably talk about them a lot. Uh, like, I really love healers in books. That is a very specific thing, but I don't know if it's weirdly specific. I'm trying to think if there's something weirdly specific. All right, here's something that I don't, I haven't like really, I don't know how to articulate completely, but here's a thing that I've been thinking about recently, <laughs> which is I love characters that have a clear distinction between their internal thought process or experience or self and then the like external self that they project or the way that they are that external self is received by others is somehow in contrast to their internal self i will try to provide examples <laughs> so like an easy example um is like Gansey from the Raven Cycle, he clearly has like an internal self that he does not necessarily project to others. He has this sort of mask that he wears or different versions of himself that he creates for different situations. And it is something that he like thinks about very intentionally about like, what does this mean about me as a person that I have this real distinction between self. Another example that I really like that I think is maybe a better example of this even, is uh, the character, I think his name is Jest from the book Heartless by Marissa Meyer. He is the Jester character. I really love like getting to see this sort of Jester persona that he has created. And then as we get to know who he is as a person beneath that persona, is such an interesting process. I wish that it had gone even more like in depth into that, but I think that that contrast between who they portray themselves to be or who they have created versus who they are internally. Another example actually that I can uh, give is while, you know, I don't like him as a person, I think he was very interesting is Kenneth from uh, the uh, Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. Another one where we get to see a real difference between his thought process and what he's thinking, feeling, what his intentions are and reasoning behind his actions, and then the persona that he projects, but also the way that he is received by others because the way that his actions are received and interpreted by those around him is su in such contrast to the actual intentions and reasoning behind them. Anyways, that's the thing. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know how to uh, make that more concise or how to describe it as like a trope or something, because that's a thing like I wish I could just Google more books that have this type of character dynamic thing in them. Uh, but it's like a very vague, a very vague thing that I don't know how to search for. So if you know of any books with characters that have that kind of uh, internal external dynamic, would love to know because it's something that I just think is so interesting and I love to read about. Uh, but yeah, so maybe that counts as weirdly specific because I'm like, this is just a thing that I've, it's kind of been rattling around in my head that I'm like, I don't know how to like explain this concisely. And then question 15 is crafting party. Honestly, one of the best parts of any hobby is sharing it with friends. Tag someone uh, who crafts or who might like to answer these questions. So I don't know actually if uh, if you craft, but I am gonna tag Yolene from Yolene Reads. Uh, if you are interested in doing this tag, you are tagged. Anyone else who is interested in doing this tag, can also count yourselves as tagged. As I said, Kara's uh, channel and original video is linked below, so definitely check them out if you don't already uh, follow her videos. But thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye!